When will we put an end to this wacko policy by this wacko prime minister? No. No. It's desperate times for the liberals as they're going after conservative leader Pierre Polyev for saying words in the House. Hello, I'm Adrian Batra. With me are Brian Lilly and Lori Goldstein. Now, Brian, I'm not trying to dismiss Pierre Polyev using certain types of language in the House that are unparliamentary. But there was some lead up to this. Polyev called Trudeau's policies wacko and a wacko prime minister, yep. all in relation to the ongoing drug crisis that Canada is facing. Then he got kicked out of the House. So is this really where we're at in our parliamentary decorum? It, it is, but look, I, I don't want to get into he started at first and sounding like a <laughs> kindergartner, which the politicians are doing a great job of, but... Justin Trudeau just kept responding to questions about the drug crisis and the NDP government's uh, from British Columbia, the BC NDP government's request to recriminalize drugs in public places. The leader opposite is showing us exactly what shameful, spineless leadership looks like. He shakes the hands of a leader of a white nationalist group, then goes to actively court the support of the group's members and thinks he can get away with it. And Trudeau was responding by calling uh, Polyev shameless and spineless, uh, accusing him of being a white supremacist, uh, courting racists and bigots. You know, all of this is crazy. And the speaker, let me say, Greg Fergus is a man that I met before he was elected to parliament. I believe he was school board trustee when I first met him in uh, Western Quebec. I always thought he was a very nice guy, a very honorable guy. He has been a failure as speaker he's the weakest speaker i've ever seen mm -hmm. and he was enforcing rules differently for polyev and for trudeau it was an embarrassing display the other day but i i know we'll talk about the polls in a second you want to know why the language is getting so chippy coming from the liberals it's the polling numbers it's how yeah. badly they're doing after their disaster of a budget that was all about politics and you know crazy spending to win votes back well, we're stuck with the crazy spending and the Liberals aren't getting the votes back. Well, I think that's a big part of it, Lori. Um, you know, Lori, uh, or Brian calls it chippy language. Certainly the rhetoric is over the top. And and you both have talked about this. We've all talked about this, that the Trudeau Liberals are not going to be able to run on really any of their policies because things have not gone well, let's say, for the last nearly decade. Uh, and so they're just going to try to paint Polyev as this extreme right wing, mega Republican type. And they've even gone so far as to issue it, uh, put out a new uh, video, a, a new ad, you know, showing Donald Trump saying wacko, wacko, wacko. And Trump says it a lot. And then likening that, of course, to Pierre Polyev. And then they're going down this weird diagonal path. No, no one in Canada knows who the, what that is. And Alex Jones and likening it. It's all, all of this is to paint Polyev is this extremist because they can't defend their own record. Yeah, well, I guess the way I would explain it is that both uh, Abacus Data and Leger came out with polls in the last 24 hours. And the way that the head of Abacus reported it was that it said, this is the first time we've seen that support for the conservatives at 44% is higher than the combined support for the Liberals at 23% and the NDP at 17%, totaling 40%. That is save the furniture time for the Liberals. Mm -hmm. If an election was held today with those numbers, we would be getting the Brian Mulroney levels of, uh, of a parliament. So it's not surprising that they do this. And I was remarking on X today, what conservative leaders since Stephen Harper, post Brian Mulroney and Joe Clark, have the liberals not accused of being a right-wing extremist but they that, accused them of being right-wing extremists back in the day as well more okay more so now the, the point you remember harper had a secret agenda and we were going to mm -hmm. uh, we were going to be like the states where some province was going to pass something that you couldn't have you know none of it ever comes to the problem now though is that it has worked in other elections mm -hmm. you know this time, according to the polls, I think what they're facing is most people, regardless of their views, are saying it's time for a change. That's right. That's what happened to Harper after nine years. 
It's what's happening now. And from my experience covering politics and talking to strategists and pollsters, people saying it's time for a change is the hardest thing for an incumbent government to um, beat down because it's not contra. It's not, you can't fight it with policy. People are just going, yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, we know about you. We know what you've done. Um, it is startling that having controlled the agenda with announcements for weeks leading up to that budget, focusing on the things that the polls say Canadians most care about, housing and cost of living, according to the polls so far, post-poll, it did nothing. And yeah. to me, that suggests to me that at least right now, people have stopped listening to the government. Well, Brian, we know that we are at least a year away from the next federal election uh, because Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, shocking absolutely nobody, finally coming out and saying, yes, indeed, he is going to support yeah. the that liberal was, budget. Did so, not see that shock. coming. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. We're, all, we're all waiting with bated breath what Singh is going to do. <laughs> but uh, And predictably, of course, his, his party will support the budget, therefore keeping the liberals uh, in power and ongoing with this uh, supply agreement that they, this axis of weasels they've they've uh, co concocted keeping canadians in sort of the suspended animation where we cannot act on what we want and that is of course a time for a change so we know the polls will tighten we, we, we the 44 percent that the conservatives are enjoying right now will it will shrink because it will be from attacks like this that the extremists and 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 scary rhetoric that they're going to use um, I think it'll be interesting, of course, what happens in the presidential election this year um, in come November. But that said, uh, the, the numbers seem baked in. And we keep going back with Warren Kinsella. Is Trudeau staying? Is Trudeau going? What's he going to do? So in light of all of this unfolding now, what does Trudeau do? Well, uh, if Trudeau and the liberal movement, which is what they call themselves, they're not a party anymore, they're a movement built around him, a cult of personality. If they were a person, we'd be calling in the priest to perform the last rites before the stench <laughs> gets too strong. But um, it's a bit like a, the, the Monty Python bit in, um, in Holy Grail, you know, bring out your dead and the guy's yelling, I'm not dead yet. That's what's happening here. And Trudeau's being kept alive by Jagmeet Singh, who wants to wait until he gets his pension and all those other MPs who want to get their pension. Yeah. I said when they changed the um, the fixed election date to the end of October, they just moved it one week. But that was an incredibly important week because by moving it one week, anyone elected in 2019 will qualify for their pension. Now, there's about 80 of them. Most of them are conservatives, but there's enough liberals block and NDPers in there that they don't want to give up their pension. It'll range between thirty and fifty thousand dollars, depending on the MP. Thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year um, that you'll get starting at fifty-five. That's a nice little um, uh, cushion. So Parliament's not going anywhere. Will Trudeau go anywhere? I, I don't know. I, I've been at odds with Kinsella on this, as you know. Uh, I think he wants to stick around. Trudeau's messianic. He believes that only he can save the country from Pierre Polyev. Only he can save the country from misinformation and disinformation. Mm -hmm. How? I don't know. He's the biggest spreader of it, uh, but he is obsessed with it. I've talked to people who've sat in the room with him, and he gets, uh, he gets messianic, as I said. That's the word that they described as he talks about this subject and how he wants to save Canada. So if he still wants to save Canada, really, he's, you know, it feels more like he's got a pillow over her face and he's trying to smother us in our sleep. Well, you know, Lori, uh, last and, and final quick thoughts to you. I don't think Trudeau's going anywhere. I don't think that he has his next job lined up. I think that his status on the on the world stage has diminished tremendously from when he was first elected in 2015. Um, I don't know if if, if that's uh, that, if that matters to him to have something to go to after he is uh um, no longer prime minister, but I don't think that he wants to leave. I think that Brian's right. I think he feels he is the only one that can uh, pull Canada away from whatever brink he has, his government has put us on. Yeah, the, the way I'd look at it is that I never had problems with the deal that brought the Liberals and NDP to power. The same thing was done in Ontario years ago. It both times had passed constitutional muster. But I think there is a real, so I'm not, I'm not challenging the constitutional right of this government to be in power, but I am challenging its moral right. 
without an election, when you have faced poll after poll after poll, showing that Canadians no longer think you're the best person to lead the, uh, the country, no longer think your party is best equipped to deal with the problems Canadians face, to cling to power. Um, to me, I, I understand that's what politicians do. And I understand that he thinks that he's the only person who can save Canada from a descent into Trump's America. But, but to me, it, it, it's, if you, if, you, if you say that you care about people, if you say that you are cognizant of what young people want and what people at every age want, and you cling to power when you're being shown over and over again that people think, thanks for what you did, you did some good things, but it's time you were gone. Mm -hmm. um, that to me, it's politics. I understand it. Probably the Conservatives would do the same thing. Mulroney did do the same thing. Bob Ray, when he was leader of the NDP in Ontario, did the same thing. Um, but I don't think it's healthy for the body politic. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to the TorontoSun.com. You're going to find commentary and coverage there you will not find anywhere else.